Hello everyone. Today I got a few dirty jokes for you. So let's start it. Number one, one day a farmer wakes up to go check on his cheese cow. He walks up and finds her dead in the grass. The man is so upset he kills himself. Then his wife wakes up. She finds her husband dead and goes to the lake and kills herself. Next the first son wakes up and notices everybody is dead. He goes down to the river and sees a mermaid. She swims up to him and says, having a bad day, huh? I'll tell you what, if you make love to me 10 times in a row without stopping, I'll bring everyone back to life. But if you don't, I will kill you. He tries to do it, but doesn't make it. She kills him. Then the second son wakes up and after seeing his dead parents, also goes to the river where he sees his dead brother. The same mermaid swims up and tells him what she told his brother. He asks, if I make love to you 20 times, what will you do? She tells him, if you are able to perform 20 times in a row, I will bring everyone back and make you the richest man alive. He then asks, well, if I do it 20 times in a row, what's stopping you from dying? That's what happened to the cow. <laughs> Number two, there was a young rabbi who on Sabbath Eve announces to the congregation that he will be leaving for a larger congregation that will pay him more. There is a silence. No one wants him to leave. Cohen, who owns several car dealerships, stands up and announces, if the rabbi stays, I'll provide him with a new BM dolly every year and his lovely wife with a Range Rover to transport their children. The congregation sighs and applauds. Feinstein, the entrepreneur and investor stands up and says, if the rabbi stays, I'll double his salary and establish a college fund to guarantee the college education of his children. More sighs and applause. Old Mrs. Horowitz, age 96, stands and announces, if the rabbi stays, I will have to with him. There is a silence. The rabbi, blushing, asks, Mrs. Horowitz, whatever possessed you to say that? Mrs. Horowitz answers, I just asked Mr. Horowitz what we could do to make the rabbi stay. Mr. Horowitz said, the rabbi. <laughs> Number three, Baba and Lerwi were sitting on the front porch of a trailer house. Lerwi says, Baba, you and me are bestest buddies. If you was gone hunting and I had with your wife and she had my baby, would that make us kinfolk? Baba replied, I don't know Leroy, but it would dang sure make us even. <laughs> Number four, the man asks how his father is settling in. Oh, it's wonderful, son. I've made some great friends. I'm well rested at night. The nurses give us a hot chocolate and a before bed every night. When leaving, curious to know about he asks a nurse. Excuse me, my dad told me that you serve him hot chocolate and a before bed every night. Why? The nurse replies, oh, the hot chocolate is to help them fall asleep and the to stop them rolling out of bed. <laughs> Number five, the bike looked better than a new one. Even though it was 10 years old, it was shiny and in great condition. He buys it and asks the seller how he kept it in such great condition for 10 years. Well, it's quite simple, says the seller. Whenever the bike is outside and it's gonna rain, rub Vaseline on the chrome as it protects it from the rain. And he hands Joe a jar of Vaseline. That night, his girlfriend Sandra invites him over to meet her parents and naturally, they ride the bike there. Just before they enter the house, Sandra stops him and says, I have to tell you something about my family. When we eat dinner, we don't talk. In fact, the first person who says anything during dinner has to do the dishes. No problem, he says, and in they go. Joe is shocked. Right in the middle of the living room is a huge stack of dirty dishes. In the kitchen is another huge stack of dishes. Piled up on the stairs, in the corridor, everywhere he looks dirty dishes. They sit down to dinner, and sure enough, no one says a word. As dinner progresses, Joe decides to take advantage of the situation. He leans over and kisses Sandra. No one says a word. He reaches over and fondles her Nobody says a word. So he stands up, grabs her, 
rips her clothes off, throws her on the table and screws her, right there in front of her parents. His girlfriend is a little flustered. Her dad is obviously livid, and her mom horrified when he sits back down. But no one says a word. He looks at her mom. She's got a great body too. Joe grabs mom, bends her over the table, pulls down her p and screws her every which way but loose right there on the dinner table. She has a big and Joe sits down. His girlfriend is furious. Her dad is boiling and mom is beaming from ear to ear, but still, total silence. All of a sudden, there is a loud clap of thunder and it starts to rain. Joe remembers his bikes, so he pulls the jar of Vaseline from his pocket. But as he stands up, the father immediately shouts, Ok, ok, I'll go do the f dishes. <laughs> Number six, a blonde walks into a dry cleaners and tells the woman at the counter, I need to have an outfit washed. The clerk was busy and slightly distracted, so she looked up from her work and said, come again. The blonde said, no, it's toothpaste this time. <laughs> Number seven, I took out my wallet, extracted $10 and asked, if I give you this money, will you buy some beer with it instead of dinner? No, I had to stop drinking years ago, the homeless man replied. Will you use it to go fishing instead of buying food? I asked. No, I don't waste time fishing. The homeless man said, I need to spend all my time trying to stay alive. Will you spend this on hunting equipment? I asked. Are you nuts? Replied the homeless man. I haven't gone hunting in 20 years. Well, I said, I'm not going to give you money. Instead, I'm going to take you home for a shower and a terrific dinner cooked by my wife. The homeless man was astounded. Would your wife be furious with you for doing that? I replied, don't worry about that. It's important for her to see what a man looks like after he has given up drinking, fishing, and hunting. <laughs> Number eight, having been playing outside with his friends, a small boy came into the house and asked, Grandma, what is it called when two people sleep in the same room and one is on top of the other. His grandma was surprised to hear such a forthright question from a six-year-old, but decided to answer as honestly as she could. Well, she said hesitantly, it's called intercourse. Oh, okay, said the boy, and he ran outside to carry on playing with his friends. A few minutes later, he came back in and said angrily, Grandma, it isn't called intercourse, it's called bunk beds and Jimmy's mom would like a word with you. <laughs> Number nine, so dopey, and the other seven dwarves go to visit the Pope. Doc goes up to the Pope and asks, Pope, can you tell me, are there any dwarf nuns in the Vatican? He thinks for a moment. No, he says, there are no dwarf nuns in the Vatican. The other dwarves chuckle. Well, can you tell me, are there any dwarf nuns in all of Europe? The Pope thinks for a second, no, I don't believe there are any dwarf nuns in Europe. And the other dwarves start to laugh even harder. Doppi looks upset. Well, can you tell me, are there any dwarf nuns in all the world? He asks. The Pope takes a minute to think. He shakes his head, no, I don't believe there are any dwarf nuns in the world. All of the dwarves burst out laughing and start chanting. Doppi the penguin. Dopey to penguin. My dad told me this joke when I was 13. Thank you and good night. <laughs> Number 10, a father purchases a lie detector that slaps people who lie. He decided to put it to the test over dinner one night. The father inquires of his son as to what he did that afternoon. I just did some homework. The son responds. The robot slaps the kid. The son then says, all right, all right. I was watching a movie at a friend's house. What movie were you watching? Dad inquires. Finding Nemo, the son responds. Again, the robot slaps the kid. All right, all right, he says. We had been watching What? exclaimed Dad. I had no idea what Pon was when I was your age. This time, the robot slaps the father. Wow, mom exclaims, laughing. He is, without a doubt, your son. The robots laps the mother. 
<laughs> Number 11, a boyfriend had a talk about <laughs> his girlfriend. I don't get <laughs> Why would you watch two people <laughs> She asked. The boyfriend replied too. The girlfriend looks surprised and then the boyfriend adds people. <laughs> Number 12, a farmer has an impotent bull. After months of desperation and trying everything, he seeks the assistance of another farmer who instructs him to show the bull some hard <laughs> He has nothing to lose, despite the idiotic advice. He installs a projector in the barn and showers the bull with <laughs> for several days, then exposes him to the cows. Sure enough, the bull jumps on the first cow he sees and begins humping like a champ as the farmer watches in delight, which quickly turns to horror as the bull pulls out and begins to <laughs> all over the cow's face. <laughs> Number 13, a mom decides to clean her son's room. Under his bed, she finds a large collection of BDSM <laughs> Disturbed and not sure what to do, she goes to her husband. What should we do about this? She asks. He replied, well, we sure as hell can't spank him. <laughs> Number 14, man. How much for a <laughs> Prostitute. Um, $20 man. Oh, damn. It was $80 for my friend. I guess I am your favorite. Prostitute. Cut it out. I charge $10 per inch. <laughs> Number 15. A guy's wife is stuck in a toilet. He tries getting her out. Nothing. She's still stuck, unable to get out. So the guy calls the plumbing company to come to the rescue. They say that they'll be there in half an hour. While waiting, the guy covers his wife's private parts with a sombrero, so she doesn't get embarrassed any further. Half an hour later, the plumbers come, look at the situation, and the more experienced looking one says, We'll get the lady out, no problem. As for the Mexican, I'm sorry, but we think he's beyond saving. <laughs> Number 16, a boy comes home from school and tells his father that his homework is to learn the difference between theory and reality. The father says, son, that's easy. I'll give you an example. Go into the kitchen and ask your mother if she would sleep with the plumber for a million dollars. After a short while, the son comes back from the kitchen and says, father, I have spoken with mother, and she said she would sleep with the plumber for a million dollars. The father says, okay, now go upstairs and ask your sister if she would sleep with the plumber for a million dollars. After a short while, the son comes down the stairs and says, Father, I have spoken with my sister, and she said she would sleep with the plumber for a million dollars. The father says, There you have it, son. That's the difference between theory and reality. In theory, we're sitting on two million dollars. In reality, we're living with a couple of sluts. <laughs> Number 17, one day, this wife said to her husband that his New Year resolution needs to be to have more romance and lovemaking. As a good husband, he booked an expensive suite for a long weekend in a posh hotel. He got dressed up and bought some injury for her and some cosplay outfits. Got some he could perform all night long. Romantic dinner at a French restaurant, candlelight dinner, and was amazing. She was stunning in a little black number, no underwear that was obvious. He bought her a gift of the most expensive perfume he could afford. He couldn't wait. Fodums were turned off all weekend as it was all about them. A weekend of amazing <laughs> masses of foreplay, every position tried, she loved the lingerie and they tried out some fantasies. Her the <laughs> up to her the <laughs> student. They made <laughs> look tame and he was sore as hell. Even his tongue was sore. And what the hell, all his ungrateful wife said when he went home was, where the f were you this weekend? And why didn't you answer your phone? <laughs> Number 18, a guy invites his friend to a New Year's Eve party. The guy warns his friend that there is going to be a lot drinking. The friend says, that's okay, I like to drink. The guy warns his friend that there will be a lot of fighting. The friend says, that's fine. I like to fight. The guy warns his friend that there is going to be a lot of <laughs> The friend says, that's fine, I like <laughs> The friend asks what he should wear. 
The guy says, it doesn't matter, it is just gonna be you and me. <laughs> Guys, these are few dirty jokes for you today. Hope so you enjoy. Subscribe to our channel for more videos. Until then, we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.